Hey guys, let's talk about sponsorship and the Magic community and what does that mean? So recently the Manosaur said that he was not, he was sponsored by TCG Player, but he gets to pick the cards that he speculates on. So basically he is making the statement that TCG Player did not tell him to put Creeping Tar Pit to buy $15. He decided to do that for no reason except there was no monetary reason according to him. There was no logical reason according to many people because you just mentioned it would be reprinted. And when he said stuff like this, didn't know we were printing actual Power 9 in this set, all caps, a great utility of the $80,000 English degree. Um, recently, I actually posted his student loan interest, and it is much higher than I expected. But that's why we have GoFundMe's, right? Now is a very good time to buy this card, like now. Get it here. And the bit.ly, the reason that he doesn't have, so he has space here. Do we all agree that he has ample space to send the TCG player link, which the bit.ly goes to? But the reason that we have a bit.ly is for tracking purposes. How many people click the link? In case anyone didn't know, I'm sponsored by TCG Player. They don't ask me to post anything and never would. I don't get money per clicks. So I wanted to screenshot that. Just like I screenshotted his Pico Trade account before it got deleted. Just like I screenshot a lot of things. Uh, many times he'll delete it within the hour he posted something. Uh, when he was talking about MTG Finance not being part of the Magic community and them being the scums of the earth, he took it back within 15 minutes. I saw the tweet, and then by the next time I refreshed, it was gone. So when you deal with someone who is behaving like this, and now he's the MTG Finance master because there's no channel bigger than him, that is MTG Finance. I don't believe Rudy is MTG Finance. Rudy is just kind of common sense. Sell your standard crap, buy reserve list stuff. I mean, I can summarize his entire argument of right there. Sell standard when, you know, when it's early, preferably when you open boxes as early as possible, and then use that money to buy reserve list, and then store the reserve list, and then that price goes up. There's not like a mystery about that. He's not picking 10 cards in standard right now that we should be buying or 10 cards in modern. He wouldn't do that because he doesn't play modern or standard. So how would he know what 10 cards are good? And that's the same way I feel about the mana source. This is a guy who went to, who we elected to the community cup. I voted for him. Because basically he begged and pleaded and he couldn't win a game, a single game against the janitor of Magic the Gap. And they wanted to lose because if they lost, then the players would get free Magic Online cards, which are now worthless. So they had to lose. They were told specifically to lose. And even though many of them attempted to lose to the Mana Source, he couldn't beat them. The dude, the kid who's, who's five years old, who's brand new to Magic, he can win a game at Magic. At Friday Night Magic. And Wedge cannot when their the employees are specifically told to lose to him. Doesn't make any sense. Top 10 cards to buy right now. Until about a day after the video goes out. Then maybe not. So even his subscribers. Even his most loyal lemmings. Like understand this concept. If you make a video and you say bye 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 bye. Now 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 now. Go 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 go. Exclamation mark, all caps. Top 10 cards to buy right now, all caps. Even if a very small percentage of those people buy it because they don't know better, you are creating a price spike. And what, who is it hurting the most? Is It's hurting the people who watch the video after initial people have bought it. Like, look at this. Go, 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 go. We have six goes in capital and 20 exclamation marks. Hashtag MTG fail Nance, which is his new funny tag that he's been using this entire time. 
I think it is pretty ridiculous, in my opinion, for someone who cannot take care of their own finances to tell you how to finance in a children's card game. Uh, somebody who... I screenshotted how much... And it wasn't like a private screen. No, it was he tweeted it to for everyone to see. And he actually tweeted at AOC, Alex something Cortez, the senator, I believe, or is a house rep. I'm not exactly sure what she is. And then uh, the reason I saw the tweet was apparently he was blasting Donald Trump again. And that tweet was right above it. You know, AOC is not going to date you where it's just because you show how much interest you have. Like how much student loans you're paying. And there's loan forgiveness and these. I don't know what to say. Except for the fact that this is the person. I would least expect. To do MTG finance. He doesn't have the background. He doesn't have the analytical mind. It would be like. I'm trying to think of a real analogy. Involving a job, but that might be difficult for him to understand. Okay, so I'm trying to think of an analogy that's not job related because I'm sure that won't reach him. He watches this video. I know he watches the video. He watches all the videos. And occasionally he creates a fake account to troll me. And I know it's him. The, you know how I know it's him? Because the way he talks. All exclamation marks. I mean, unless his fan base, I mean, could also be a, a rabid fan that just started a new account. Okay, so I, I figured out an analogy on the fly. It would be like, hey, we have a nuclear power plant. Let's put a failed English professor in charge of this nuclear power plant and hope it goes well. No. Blank no. It, it wouldn't work. We need people with PhDs. We need people with economic degrees. We need people who look at graphs and know what they're talking about. I will say, I looked at the video, um, and the speculations were not all that bad. I do have a problem with number one, the Shocklands. I love the Shocklands, and you guys know I love Shocklands, but even I wouldn't tell you to spec on them right now. There's just too many of them. There's like just too many. And we know the reprint's coming in three to five years again. So how is this card supposed to go up, up in price when we all know it's going to be reprinted again in a standard set three to five years from now? At this point in time, we know that shock lands are a cycle of lands, just like the buddy and check lands that will continuously be reprinted to the ground. And once they rotate out of standard, we just wait until the next standard and the next standard after that one, and they'll be back again. That's... A horrific long-term hold. Back to Weds. Uh, the Wedgelings and the Lemmings. I think that it is a disservice. The reason MTG Finance is upset at Weds now is... You know, I would love to make fun of MTG Finance and say that it's because Weds is impacting their financials. But I don't think that's the case. I think all of them have identified that Wedge is grossly un unqualified to be talking about MTG Finance, given his background. It is the least... If we were all on an island together, and there was like a hundred of us, and Wedge was on this island with us, we would A, starve to death, but more importantly, if we put Wedge in charge of the economy of our island... We'd be aft. We would be so aft, we wouldn't survive the night. I mean, just imagine that we were stuck on an island and there was a bunch of wedges. How, like, the only option is really to kind of just survive on your own at that point. Like, I would leave the collective hole and be like, nope, I'm not going to support these people. I'm out. And we talk about society and loan forgiveness and Donald and AOC and all of these really good, interesting concepts that Weds likes to talk about all the time. I believe in one core philosophy that I believe with every ounce of my body, every ounce of my being. Get strong. Don't beg. 
Don't have people pay to you. Get as strong as you can. And then create jobs for everyone. Hey, you want to foster a dog? Fostering a dog is at least $1,000. $800 for heartworm for a medium to large sized dog. You need to make a shit ton of money before you can foster one dog. I fostered 14. That was a lot. Very expensive. But that's what I want to do. If you want to give back and you want to teach an entrepreneur class in the most dangerous and poorest city in America, you need to be a successful entrepreneur. Be the change that you want to see. Don't be like the fake change, right? Like everyone talks about these terms, chains, and they don't understand what it actually means. I worked my way from nothing to where I am today. Nothing. So it makes me very angry when I see people who had a lot more than I have. Wedge, for all he complains about white males, he is a white male. He is the demographic, according to Wedge, that gets the most benefits of any demographic. Right? He grew up in the suburbs. He still lives, he has a family that loves him enough to allow him to live with his wife and his wife at their home. He has a family which is fortunate enough that even when he wasn't a big YouTube channel, they allowed him not to have a job. That's not me and that's not you. We need to work for our money. Therefore, when somebody tells us about MTG Finance and they want to save us money and they talk about community this, community that, and the fact that he's not making any money from TCG Player, what does he have? Like a job? Is that how his income's rolling in? His job? TCG Player, I'm never going to use again. I used to buy my specs from TCG Player. I'm not going to buy a single card from that place again. I think it is the worst and I would advise you not to buy it. Like, speak with your wallet. And don't sell on it either, because you're paying 15 to apparently 40% on, on car. You know. I'm going to go ahead and say it. You have a lot of competing interest. Uh, MTG Finance, these people all write for different websites. Many of them are behind a paywall. And one of the questions I get most often is, how do I think they're making money? Or they're making money off subscriptions, not investments. It's very hard to spec on a card. There was an interesting article. A person tripled the price of a card, but the buy list didn't go up, and there was no other outs, and there's no other interest in that commander card. So they made $0.25 cents a card after the price, price spiked to $10 from $3. So he made everyone who wanted this card pay three times as much for $0.20 cents of profit a card. You have to be smart enough and strong enough. I don't think there is any better feeling than when you create a job for a family with kids or you know a, a student who hasn't had a job for eight months or a person who's been out of a job for four years and you provide them something they can be proud of, something they're not panhandling, something they're not e-begging. You provide them something that they go to work, they work a good day, they feel good, and they go home and they get, you know, they're able to provide for their family. And in your spare time, you speak at entrepreneur classes at the local library. Most of those people are not college educated or will never go to college, but they are thinking of starting a business in a laundromat or they're thinking about doing a car wash or owning a Quiznos or even just managing a Quiznos. That's what I do. It's not that I think I'm better than Weds, because I'm not. It's just that I have a very different perspective. I was given nothing. Nothing. I had to fight and scrap and yell and scream for every inch I gained. And people still want to take it away from me. People still attack my and harass my employees. Some of them, which I posted on this channel, in very bad way, like sexual ways. And it's just like, stop. You ask why. So you have to assume, yes, I have female employees.
But you have to also assume that none of them appear on this channel. Why do you think that is the case? Why do you think that I don't even attempt to do that anymore? Because it's not worth it. Um, the harassment and all this stuff. I mean, I'll be I'll be serious with you guys. No, I I'll be honest with you guys. Probably never again. You don't need to worry about that because I can take the criticism, I can take the beating, I can take the hate, but my workers should not have to do that. And I should not pressure them to do that at all. And I've learned that, and I have evolved, and employees first. Bye.